there's a bit at the end of this latest article that you wrote that I found actually most interesting in the article. It hasn't got that much attention, but I want to get your uh, take on this. And, and this re relates to a story or an incident that happened a couple of months ago. Many of you remember it. It was in the Strait of Hormuz. There was an incident where an uh, American carrier almost blew a couple of Iranian speedboats out of the water and perhaps would have started uh, the next war, a uh, war against Iran, or potentially a World War III. Um, and it was averted, thankfully, uh, at, the, at the last second. We later learned that um, there was really nothing to be terribly concerned about. The incident was overblown, and that there was a vice admiral uh, in charge of the fleet in, in, the, in the Strait of Hormuz who said, basically, there was, there was no concern there, uh, that it was overblown. Well, yeah, the second part, basically. He was yeah. concerned, but it, yeah, was, but it was overblown. We were never threatened. We were never threatened. And, and you talk about uh, this gen uh, vice admiral's name is Kevin Cosgrove. And, and in your article, you write, nonetheless, Cosgrove's demeanor angered Cheney according to the former senior intelligence official. But a lesson was learned in the incident. The public had supported the idea of retaliation and was even asking why the U.S. didn't do more. The former official said that a few weeks later, a meeting took place in the vice president's office. Quote, the subject was how to create a casus belli between Tehran and Washington, he said. What you're writing there is that Cheney, there was a meeting in the White House where Cheney presided over looking to cook up the next war, a, a false war based on false intelligence. Uh, my oldest son is a, a lawyer, and when I, I sent him the story before it was published, basically in, in a final form, just a day, and he, he wrote back and he said, you really buried the lead in this one about Casas Belli. Um, how many press are here? Anyway, there was a meeting among the among the items, <laughs> among the items considered and rejected, which is why the New Yorker did not publish it on grounds that it wasn't accepted. One of the items was why not every there was a, a dozen ideas proffered how to how to trigger a war. The one that interested me the most was why don't we build we in our shipyard build four or five Iranian boats that look like Iranian PT boats, put Navy SEALs on them with a lot of arms, and the next time one of our boats goes through the Straits of Hormuz, start a shoot-up. Might cost some lives, and it was rejected because you can't have Americans killing Americans. But that, that's the kind of, that's the level of stuff we were talking about, provocation. But that was rejected. So um, I could understand the argument of not writing something that was rejected. Uh, maybe. I'm, I basically, my attitude always towards editors is they're mice training to be rats. So, um, but um, <laughs> but you have to you have to you know the but the point is uh, J June if you know what that means um, um, uh, silly maybe but potentially very lethal because one of the things they learned in the incident was the American public if you get the American if you get the right incident the American public will support you know bang bang kiss kiss you know we're into it and the public although that was the other side that had issue that was important what happened in the Gulf. In the Straits in early January, the president was just about to go to the Middle East for a, a visit. So it was all, that was one reason they wanted to gin it up, get it going. Uh, look, um, uh, is it high school? Yeah. Are we playing high school with, you know, 5,000 5, nuclear warheads in our arsenal? Yeah, we are. We're playing, you know, who's the first guy to run off the highway um, with us in Iraq?